So let's be honest, you're working out because you want to be more attractive, have a more aesthetic physique, and honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, here's the most overlooked muscle for an aesthetic physique, and one muscle that you should actually avoid overdeveloping if you want to maximize aesthetics. Let's get into it. Now first off, we have to understand what is the hallmark of an aesthetic physique. Well, if you really think about it at a very high level, it all comes down to accentuating a V-shaped frame or inverted triangle as some girls like to say. And this is exactly the reason why a lot of people want to be at a lower body fat percentage. It's usually to be visually more defined, usually with a separation of the arms and have a overall smaller midsection. But that's on the fat loss side. What can we do on the muscle building side to actually accentuate this V-shaped frame and be more aesthetic? Well, the obvious answer is, oh, get a bigger chest, get bigger lats, and of course, shoulders. However, let's touch on that last point. When people think about shoulders, mainly they're working on their front delts. Let me explain. You see, the muscles in your shoulders can be divided into three different muscle groups. That is the front delts, the side delts, and the rear delts. And it just so happens that for most general people going about their day, they probably have underdeveloped side and rear delts. After all, what is the very first exercise you think about when you think about training shoulders? It's probably some sort of shoulder press, which is a phenomenal exercise for developing your front delts, and also to some degree involves your side delts. However, you don't really consider it a side delt exercise. You see, what if I told you that the most overlooked exercise for developing a more aesthetic physique is developing your side and rear delts. But real quick, on top of your physique, confidence also plays a big role in overall attractiveness. And one silent confidence killer for men is it not having clear skin, which is why I'm super excited to have Tej Hanley as a sponsor of today's video. So their entire motto is uncomplicated skincare for men. So they focus on actually simplifying the skincare routine process. And honestly, it's the best skincare system out there for guys like you and me. So if you're new to skincare in general, I recommend starting with their level one system, which comes with all the basics. You get a daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime on your skin, a two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of dead skin cells, an AM moisturizer with SPF 20, meaning sunscreen, because you always wanna be protecting your skin from the sun, that is a non-negotiable. But of course, you don't need a sunscreen at night, so they also have a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. And then my favorite part of Teach Hanley, because you know, I like being informed about what I'm putting on my skin, is they even have an instruction card on what exactly to do with each skincare product so you're not confused how much product to use, and what order should you use each product. They make it easy to have amazing skin, which is why I really like them. On top of that, they have over 7,000 five-star reviews from customers around the globe. So this isn't something you wanna be putting off, especially when it comes to managing acne and even aging for that matter. Your future self will surely thank you if you act now. And because Teach Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're giving you guys an amazing deal. Just click the first link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first order, as well as some free gifts, which are actually super nice. Plus as a member, you also get 20% off for life. And by the way, the free gifts are worth like $20 in total, and they're game changers. For one thing, you get this cool silicon body scrubber, as well as a nail and face grooming kit that is super nicely packaged. Personally, I prefer this because of how sleek it looks, and personally, I also hate paying for nail clippers, but I digress. Don't wait any longer. Click the first link in the description and start your skincare journey today. So first off, why the side delts? Well, if you think about ways to actually accentuate your V-frame, unless you're still growing, you really can't control how broad your collarbones are. But because the side delts sit at the corners of this Dorito inverted triangle shape that you're trying to maximize, the more you grow your side delts, the wider you actually become. Take a look at me, for example. I naturally have a very narrow frame. Like, I'm not naturally that broad if you just look at my collarbones. But because my shoulders are more developed, it gives this illusion of me appearing more broad, and it doesn't really look like I'm super narrow. So I convinced you, now you want bigger side delts. What should you actually be doing to get bigger side delts? Well, let me talk about that. So ultimately, if you're trying to maximize side delt growth, shoulder press alone isn't gonna cut it. You're gonna want to isolate your side delts, and the best way to do so is with a lateral raise. Now when you think of a lateral raise, you probably think of some sort of dumbbell lateral raise, but, 
Most recent evidence may suggest that there are better options out there. You see, the dumbbell lateral raise is what's known as a shortened focus movement. That is, most of the resistance occurs at the top of the range of motion where the side delts are most contracted slash shortened. And because of gravity, there's practically no resistance when you're lengthened. However, you may have heard in the science-based lifting community, especially here on YouTube, that incorporating exercises that are more lengthened focus, that is, exercises where the bulk of the resistance occurs when the muscle's more stretched, may be better for hypertrophy, which is why my recommendation for you is a cable lateral raise. You see, by manipulating the position of the cables, basically raising the cable up to hand height, you're able to have the bulk of the resistance occur in the stretch position down here. And even more so, I've kind of changed my opinion on this over the years, but if you reach for the cable behind your back, you can get an even better stretch in that lengthened position, which is, again, once I said, ideal for muscle growth. Now keep in mind though, like performing the exercise willy-nilly isn't gonna get you anywhere. You're not gonna be building a whole lot of muscle if you're not actually pushing yourself in the gym. That is why I recommend that you need to be training close enough to failure during your working sets as well as applying progressive overload over time, which is a fancy way of saying that you're making things harder over time, either by adding weight, and if you can't do that, add reps, be able to handle the exercise at a slower eccentric. These are all different ways to apply progressive overload. Now you might be wondering, what is close enough to failure? Well, there's really no conclusive evidence that tells you, okay, this is the point at which you can start building muscle. However, I do generally recommend training at least to an RIR of three or under. And if you're not familiar with RIR, check out this video. So the side delts will help you look broader and accentuate that V-frame, but keep in mind guys, we are not 2D characters living in the second dimension. We live in the third dimension, of course, and that is why another hallmark of having the static physique has nothing to do with the V-frame, but that is looking muscular from the side. This is where having big arms, big chest, a thick back can all help. However, you're most likely already training those muscle groups, but the rear delts, without developing the rear delts, you're not gonna be as aesthetic as you can be from the side. And chances are, you're probably just not giving the love that your rear delts need to actually grow. Because when you think of a rear delt exercise, I think the most common thing people think of is some sort of face pull, which is kind of sad to hear. And that's because while a face pull will involve the rear delts to some degree, you're also involving a lot of the muscles in the mid back, including your traps and rhomboids. And overall, think of the face pull as more of a functional movement, practicing external rotation. But again, if you want to maximize the growth of a certain muscle, you want to isolate that muscle. And that is why I highly recommend you do a high to low cable rear delt fly. And look, I will make a bold statement here, but I feel like a lot of people out there don't really understand or know what training their rear delts actually feels like. I myself have tried numerous exercises over the years, and this has been the best option for growing and also just understanding what training the rear delts actually feels like, developing that mind-muscle connection. And ultimately, I think it comes down to these three factors. First factor with this variation is it helps you limit scapular retraction. The key to biasing the rear delts is avoiding scapular retraction, which is basically just pinching your shoulder blades together. When you do this, you're ultimately involving other muscles into the movement as well, namely the traps and rhomboids. And that's why I think this exercise is better than something like a reverse pec deck fly, where when your arms are pretty much straight out and completely flared, it's kind of easy for you to retract your scapula. However, when you have that 45 degree angle, it makes it awkward for you to naturally squeeze your shoulder blades together, thus having an easier time biasing the rear delts. Now the second factor is simply because it's an isolation exercise. Since you're only gonna be moving at the shoulder joint, this limits other muscles such as the biceps and forearms from taking over the movement, such as with a rear delt row. And lastly, the third factor, and why I think a cable high to low rear delt flies better than let's say dumbbells and stuff, is because it is more length and focus and it's just simply a more stable movement. Similar to a cable lateral raise, because you're not bound by gravity, you're able to change the resistance profile of the movement and either be able to manipulate it to become more mid-range focus or even more length and focus depending on the position of your body. And of course, this goes without saying, but if an exercise is more stable, you ultimately have an easier time pushing to failure while still keeping good form and it's just gonna be a better time for you overall. So those are the two muscle groups Groups I highly recommend you focus on if you're trying to maximize your aesthetics. However, one muscle I actually recommend you limit is the upper traps. Maybe this is because I have very responsive traps when I train them, but 
having overdeveloped traps will actually decrease the broadness of your physique from a proportionality standpoint. Meaning, due to proportions, if you have big meaty traps, it can actually give the illusion of you being more narrow and compressed rather than wide because if this is overdeveloped but this is underdeveloped, it's not gonna be a good look. And because of that, I don't really train my upper traps directly, like I don't do shrugs or even Kelso shrugs, but keep in mind that I'm approaching this video from a pure aesthetic lens of you wanting to be more aesthetic. There can be many different reasons why you wanna train traps. This is just me saying that from an aesthetic factor, it might impact your like proportions a little bit. Now, for those who made it this far in this video, you're probably not gonna be walking around shirtless 24 seven, and that is why having nice fitting clothes can also really boost their aesthetics. Which is why I highly recommend you check out Abel's men's line, which has some really cool minimalistic clothes for a really good price in my opinion, and the quality is also pretty good, that also can be worn in and outside the gym. And right now they are running a big birthday sale they're having, which is up to 20% off on men's clothes, up to 60% off on women's. And on top of that, if you use code PATH, you'll get an extra 10% off at checkout that stacks on top of the discount. So judging by how things went during Black Friday, men's line clothes tends to sell pretty fast. So act quickly if you're interested. But with that said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave a like if you wanna support my page and hit subscribe if you wanna continue developing your physique and getting that overall aesthetics locked down.